thank you for that, David, and thank you to the previous speakers. It's been um, a very interesting evening. Um, as David said, I've really been working as a, a biochemist and a cell biologist, and more recently as a, a neurologist um, and a sensory and consumer scientist in the last 10 years. And initially I was in, in milk products before um, moving to a uh, more interesting beverage in, in wine. And I was very um, keen to come along to Tasting Australia, Australia and they're excited about being involved in this session tonight. Um, I have been to a few of the events in the past and it's always a wonderful celebration of the um, abundant and innovative food that we do have in this country as well. Um, and I was also um, interested in being involved in tonight's session because I've, I've had a keen interest in um, umami and um, basically stemming from my training of um, undergraduate students in technology and viticulture in their sensory uh, training, um, but also I'm quite fascinated by um, how um, imami-rich foods interact with, with wine as well, and there's not a lot of information in that area um, at all. And probably like most of you, as a youngster, um, I was taught there were four basic tastes, and it was only um, until fairly recently as well that um, um, we were teaching that at the university because when I went through university I wasn't taught there was five tastes, I was only taught there was four, four tastes as well. So the title of my um, talk this evening is Food, um, Savoury Wine and Umami, or, um, and Shingo was talking about good and bad taste, <laughs> have we got more taste than, than we thought? So, sorry Paris. So, um, being the nerdy um, scientist that I am, I've got a few um, things for you to do tonight. You're going to have, um, con um, conduct a few experiments. Um, so don't think you're going to have it easy now. You're going to get you to do some work now. I'm going to get you to snap on the latex gloves. Um, hopefully you've got a, a, a trustworthy partner. If not, um, hopefully you're, um, you're the person next to you on the table is, um, is trustworthy. Um, and there's a lot of confusion surrounding um, the concept of, of taste and flavour and this is one of the basic things that we do teach our students in um, analogy, uh, viticulture and also gastronomy students as well. Um, and then we'll look at the um, umami sensation and I've also got some salt for you to have a look at as well as a comparison and we'll talk a bit about the sensations of these two taste modalities. Um, then I'm going to look at um, the taste of umami in, in native foods. As David said, I've been doing a bit of work um, in indigenous <coughs> foods and have quite a strong interest um, in their health benefits as well as their sensory aspects. Then we're going to focus a little bit about umami on wine. As I said, there's very, very little research in this area. And um, eventually we're going to have a bit of fun and we're going to conduct a, a consumer study and so I hope that you're happy to be consumers tonight. We're going to ask a few little questions, which are not too personal. Um, and um, we hope to publish this material as well. So hopefully you can contribute to that. But just to differentiate between um, taste and flavour, taste, or what's also named, known as gustation, um, taste compounds are non-volatile compounds. So that means, for example, if you swirl your glass of wine, um, um, some compounds come out of the, the, the wine and they're um, in the headspace just above the surface of the wine, so they are the volatile um, compounds, so they are in um, the gaseous phase, if you like. Um, but taste compounds are non-volatile non and they need to be soluble in a saliva and they need to be that because they need to then um, interact with some specialised molecules on the surface of cells known as receptors, which are within your taste buds in the tongue. Um, Tastes also specifically are able to stimulate certain nerves which carry the taste information to your brain. Um, another um, sensory attribute, if you like, that tastes share is this, um, um, is, is adaptation. So if, for example, you are given a, a sweet solution and you repeatedly ingest this solution, eventually you'll no longer see it as being sweet. And in fact, our saliva is actually salty. Um, we have quite a high sodium chloride content and to perceive something as salty in a food stuff has to be higher than the <coughs> level of sodium chloride that you have in your own um, saliva. 
um, and you, you probably don't notice that your, your saliva is, is salty, that's because you've adapted to it, and it's probably some sort of um, mechanism which allows you then to see other stimuli that come along, um, and you, then you're not sort of, your system, your senses aren't continually bombarded with, with stimuli. Smell or olfaction, on the other hand, um, the smell molecules or compounds, odours or aromas they're sometimes referred to, are actually volatile compounds. So they do need to be um, in, the, in the gaseous phase. And um, not unlike tastes, smell compounds are detected by the interaction um, of these molecules with um, specialised proteins, um, known as receptors, on the olfactory cells which are in the back of your nose. And um, unlike uh, taste compounds, which are, are occurring in um, beverages and foods, they occur in the part per thousand range. Um, there are tens of thousands of aroma molecules, and they occur at very low levels in the um, part, per, part per trillion range. So just to show you a quick uh, diagram um, of our taste and um, smell system. So the, the picture in the um, bottom uh, right hand corner is our tongue and that's our primary taste organ. And those black cells are just um, the cells of the tongue and those orange segmented or onion like structures are the taste buds. And the taste buds contain those special taste receptor cells which interact with the taste compound that comes um, in the saliva and that chemical signal of the taste is transferred into an electrical signal and that signal is transported along the nerve fibre to the brain up in the smell and taste centre that you can see there. Um, with our sense of smell, which is the second chemical sense, um, you can see that there's a little um, square area at the back of our nose, at the base of our brain, and there's some specialised cells there known as the olfactory epithelium. And again, these have those specialised protein uh, receptors which interact with the uh, smell molecules, and that chemical stimulus is converted to electrical stimulus, and those uh, stimuli are then carried by our nerve fibres to the smell and taste centre in our brain. But also, um, if we ingest food or beverages, the heat of our mouth actually warms up the volatile compounds. And those volatile compounds, as we breathe in and out, there's a, a passage of air through the in and out, which causes those volatile compounds to go up the back of our throat. So, so flavour, as opposed to taste, then, is, um, really involves um, also our, um, the sense of our chemical sense of smell and sometimes it's referred to as smelling by mouth but really um, technically uh, flavour overall encompasses not just the smelling by mouth it also encompasses taste stimuli with taste sensations that we perceive and the other oral cavity sensations that we perceive which are the mouth feel so mouth feel sensations include things like the warmth that you feel from maybe consuming a spirit um, the graininess that you might perceive in, in um, some foodstuffs, or uh, another example is the, the creamy sensations that you get from things like butter and um, um, foods that are high in fats. Okay, so um, one partner needs to slip on the glove, and your other your partner needs to close their eyes block their nose by holding the uh, nostrils quite tightly together so you're not um, just breathing in air through your nostrils. And the person that has the glove on needs to pick up sample A. So you, if you pick up your sample A now, you need to um, unwrap that while your partner's got their eyes closed and their nose locked, holding the nostrils very tight. Okay. Now, you can unwrap some of the A and then just put your whole partner to the mouth. Choose slowly, hold your nose tightly, and try and identify the sensation. So, you should be able to get some sweet sensation, some textual sensation, but you shouldn't be able to really identify it until you unlock your nose.